Hello ladies and gentlemen, and you're watching Paleo 101, where we talk about fossils, minerals, and everything recorded in the Earth's rocks. On Sunday, I went to the Bell Point Rock and Mineral Show in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and I had a great time. And today I just wanted to show you some of the various specimens that I bought at the Bell Point Rock and Mineral Show. I got some pretty good deals, and I met some really good people there. And I'll show you some of the various fossils that I bought at the show. And so the first fossil that I bought is this. I've been saving a lot of mo a lot of money for this. This is a Carcharodontosaurus tooth. Um, on the front here, it's the picture of a Tyrannosaurus. It's not an accurate depiction. Uh, it's a completely different species of theropod dinosaur. But nevertheless, this is a Carcharodontosaurus. And Carcharodontosaurus is a large theropod dinosaur that lived in Africa about a hundred about a hundred million years ago during the late Cretaceous, during the Cinnamanian stage of the Cretaceous period. And as you can see, it had a very long, sharp, serrated tooth. Um, I'll probably take it out in other various videos as I talk about this particular piece in the near future in some of my videos. But this here is a large theropod dinosaur tooth called Carcharodontosaurus saharicus, and it lived during the Cretaceous period about 100 million years ago. And so this specimen is a really nice one. I've always wanted a tooth like this, so I was very happy to uh, buy this specimen. The next specimen is this. This is a crinoid called Macrocrinus. And we talked about crinoids before in some of the various videos. Um, this is a calyx of a crinoid called Macrocrinus modulus. And this is a very, very beautiful specimen. This comes from the Everett, Edwardsville Formation in, I believe, Indiana. And this is a gorgeous specimen. This is the calyx, this is the top portion of a crinoid. And so when we talk about crinoids, and when we mention crinoids, we usually think about the crinoid stems. They're very common fossils. The, a complete stem would be called a column. And these, these are two stems connected together. This is from the Fort Payne Formation in Alabama that I collected. But uh, they usually go together like this, where the head portion is on the top, and then it's connected by a stem. And so the head portions are a little bit rare, but a complete crinoid are even more rare to find. And so calyxes like these are very well preserved. And the, and the crinoids from the Edwardsville Formation in Indiana are some of the best well-preserved crinoids in the world. And so lots of collectors go out and find these specimens and prepare them. This is a, uh, what a prepared specimen looks like. And you can see it has these beautiful um, arms to collect food. It would have had these small hair-like substances on its arms called pinules. And right here, you may not be able to see on the camera, is the anal tube. The anal tube is preserved in this particular specimen. So this is a really gorgeous crinoid calyx called Macrocrinus. The next specimen that I bought is actually this. Now I know this may not look like much, but it's actually pretty cool. Um, what I'm holding is a mammalian coprolite. So this is, a coprolite simply just means dung stone. So yes, I am holding fossilized feces. Um, this is probably from a carnivorous mammal. And the reason why we can tell it's from a carnivorous mammal is because some of these coprolites have been cut open and, at, and have actually been found to have bone fragments within them. And so it has been suggested that this is a coprolite from a carnivorous mammal. Not exactly sure what type of mammal it belonged to. All we can really tell is that it was probably a carnivorous and it was a, car a carnivorous animal and it was possibly belonged to a mammal. This is from the Broil Formation of South Dakota. And this is about, uh, this is a Ligocene in age. So this is about uh, 35 million years old or so. The next specimen is this. This is pretty cool. Um, here are footprints. This is, comes from the Coconino Sandstone in Arizona, and this is from the Permian period, um, the early Permian. And as you can see here, you can see these tiny, small tracks. Um, gorgeous specimen. I've always wanted something from the Coconino Sandstone formation in Arizona, and it's, an, and it's a portion which uh, it's a portion of a uh, rock unit that's actually in the Grand Canyon. So it's one of the top uh, top layers within the Grand Canyon called the Coconino Sandstone, which is an, an, an Aeolian or desert deposit. And here are little tiny trackways, uh, footprints from some type of tetrapod animal. I'm not exactly sure what type of animal made these tracks. All we, ca all we do know is that it was from a quadruped animal, and it probably belonged to maybe an amphibian or some type of stem mammal or mammal-like reptile. Um, again, I'm not exactly sure what animal made these tracks. All we can tell that it was from a tetrapod. The next specimen I have or that I bought is actually this. This was unfortunately labeled 
as a plesiosaur tooth. And it's not a plesiosaur tooth. I've actually done some online research. This is actually the uh, rostral bar from a sawfish. Um, this is what part of the tooth from a sawfish. And this comes from the phosphate mines of, uh, of Africa, of Morocco, Africa. This is Cretaceous in age, um, from the Manastrician stage of the late Cretaceous. And this is actually the rostral tooth from a sawfish. So it's quite interesting. I actually don't have this, so I think it's actually a lot more, pretty cooler. It's, it's actually, I think, is a cooler than the uh, plesiosaur tooth. And so may, I'll probably find another plesiosaur tooth next time, but even though I, this isn't a plesiosaur tooth, it is pretty cool to actually have um, the rostral tooth of a sawfish from the Cretaceous. The next specimen is this. This is actually a sea urchin from the Cretaceous rocks of Morocco, from the Cretaceous limestones of Morocco. And here you can probably see is Ambulacra, which are these small like petals here. This, this, this animal has these five petals on the top of its, uh, on the top of its body. And this simply just means that it was broken down into five parts. All echinoderms have these five parts. And this is one of the coolest things that I have so far, and I think it was pretty cool myself. And so this is where the mouth would have been in the bottom portion here. So this is a echinoid, uh, a prehistoric sea urchin from the Cretaceous period. And last but not least, I have this. This is probably one of the coolest fossils that I think I have. This is called a Baculites grandis. This is actually an ammonite. And typically we usually see ammonites as being coiled in a whorl. Um, their shell are being coiled up. But these ammonites are called heteromorph ammonites and they can come in some wacky, crazy uh, structures where their shells are actually twisted and straight like this. This is called Baculites grandis. This is an ammonite and the reason we can tell this is an ammonite is that if you can look closely, it has these complex suture patterns. These suture patterns are actually diagnostic for us to tell the species of an ammonite. And, ammonites, have, and am, ammonites and ammonoids have these various different suture patterns, and this is called ammonitic. And it has these complex suture patterns. These represent the various chambers that the animal would have lived in. So this is actually a straight-shelled ammonite called Baculites. Um, this comes from the uh, prairie shale formation in, I believe, South Dakota. And the prairie shale has these various uh, fragments and sometimes complete specimens of Baculites. And it probably has some of the best well-preserved Baculites specimens in the world. And these, uh, this specimen is the largest Baculites specimen I have. And it's gorgeous. It has these complex sutures representing the various different breaks in the chambers. And it's just a gorgeous specimen. I absolutely love it. So that is some of the various specimens that I um, bought from the Rock and Mineral Show. Um, I had a really good time, and I'm able to, and I'm hope I'm, hopefully I'm able to use these specimens for teaching paleontology and geology. And this is Paleo One Hundred and One. I'll see you later with another video.